Hello and welcome to Project Home DIY. My name is Christine, the owner and curator of Project Home and your projects. This month we have crates and pillows to create a cozy corner in your home. We will do something new that we haven't done and that's fabric painting, which is super cool with our awesome reusable stencils. And then we will build our own crates and begin um, getting organized in our homes for the fall season coming up. So let's get cozy comfy in our corner and get to building these crates. I'm gonna move the camera right around here so you can see from a bird's eye view of me creating and staining and stenciling right up close and personal. So see you on the other side. Okay, here we are with our crates. That's where I'm going to start because the pillowcases shouldn't take so long. We can do those in between um, while the crates are drying with whatever um, medium you choose to use to cover the crate. So I'm gonna set the pillows and the stencils to the side <clears throat> and begin on the crates. So don't be afraid of all these screws. I know it's a lot, but the cool thing about these crates and about Project Home DIY is we, I create these things so you can assemble and do all this right at home with the tools we provide. It may be a little harder. You may have to take a break. That's okay, um, but it is totally 100% doable. And we have everything pre-drilled for you. So you can see that here, there's a deeper hole than back here. This is called a countersunk um, hole. So that countersinks the head of the screws and then the head of the screw is flush with your wood. So if you ever want a hole like this, it's called a countersink um, drill bit. So you'll need to ask for a countersink drill bit if you ever need something like that. And it creates a bigger divot so the head of the screw can be flush with the wood. Just a nicer finish, cleaner finish. Um, we, they're on everything and even pre-drilled into the wood that you're going to be um, screwing into. So this hole lines up with this hole and it's gonna make putting the screws in so easy. So don't worry about that too much. But before we get started with anything, we're going to um, stain or paint your crate. I know some of you guys are gonna come up with some just amazing ideas on staining and or painting and it's gonna look awesome. Um, but I'm going to stick with just a general basic color. Um, if you want to create a stain, if you don't have a stain on hand, you can create, and what I mean by a stain is just a wood stain, um, like a Minwax brand or a Varathane brand. Um, <clears throat> either one will work. This is my favorite new color, Aged Barrel. I also like Dark Walnut. It's a dark, woody, um, warmer brown color. This is more of a gray finish. Um, but if you don't have a wood stain, which these can be messy because they are oil-based, you can always use your paints, your Project Home paints, and squirt some in here, water it down, and then wipe it on. And it'll just be like a stain, it because um, you're just diluting the pigment in that paint, and <clears throat> so then you can stain with these. So just depending on the color that you want and the finish that you want, you can either stain with a wood stain. You can get little tiny, um, I think they're half or quarter pints um, at any um, Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store Ace of your wood stain and it'll last forever for like under seven, eight dollars. Um, so if you do want the wood stain, I do recommend using gloves. I will be using gloves. Um, again, <clears throat> it is um, oil-based, <clears throat> so it is messy. Um, it, it will not wash off with just uh, water, soap and water. So keep that in mind when you are using stain. I also like to cover my tables <clears throat> with some paper. The paper that comes in 
Target Home Boxes is great to use um, just to cover your working area surface, especially when using stain, when you use two, because it's just so much easier cleanup, so much easier. So, when using a stain, um, let me see if I have, I need an opener, a can opener. There should be one in my tools. And I don't see one. Of course not. So I'm gonna try to use this screwdriver, but this is not the right tool for the job, but it's going to work. There we go. Worked. This color is very finicky and I probably shouldn't have opened that yet before I shook it. All of the pigment goes right to the bottom in this color. So, you open up your stain and it's not coloring the wood very well, shake it up. Stain allows the grain of the wood to still show through and I like that look, especially for these crates. So that's the look I'm going for when I'm trying to stain with these. So, just take a scrap rag and dip just a little bit a little bit of stain goes a long way. That's like I said, the it will last you forever, the teeny tiny little pints. And wipe away. You kind of have to dab in some places to get it in the nooks and crannies. If they're, when these are assembled, obviously um, when these wood pieces are assembled for you, <clears throat> they're nail gun together. So you can see little tiny nail pin holes. And then they are also glued for extra durability. If there is glue on wood, um, it will not allow stain to penetrate. So just keep that in mind. If you see um, a place where it's not staining in the corners where two pieces are glued together, it's possibly because there's a little bit of glue there. If you don't, if it's on a really noticeable area, which it shouldn't be, um, you can always take your sanding block from your starter kit and um, sand it off. My rag is not a good choice. It's leaving bits and pieces and crumbles everywhere. Yuck, because I just cut it. <clears throat> so that is a stained piece. You don't want to glob it on. You don't want it to be super thick and ecky. It's going to take forever to dry. Again, it's oil-based. So um, it'll feel kind of oily, but set this to the side and do the next piece. And just keep going on until all your pieces are stained. Okay, crates are stained and I will set those aside to dry in um, either the sun or just outside. And once it be, I would give it at least an hour to not be dirty feeling. Um, if, you're, if you touch it and stain comes off on your fingers, just give it a little bit more time. So set those aside and we'll move on to the pillows. Okay, for the pillows, this is gonna be super fun. New technique, we've stenciled in a lot of our boxes before, but not on a fabric. So this is definitely new um, for you guys, but relatively easy and almost easier than doing stenciling on wood because you don't have to be as perfect. So 
I'm going to cut up my stencil. Um, I do want to mention that if you are new to Project Home DIY and have not joined our VIP group, make sure that you um, follow the link. It's in our emails. It's in, um, once you log into your account on our website, you can uh, go there. If you, in your starter kit, you will have instructions about um, everything. Here's about creating your account. And then here's a link to joining the VIP Facebook group. Make sure you join that group because we do cool things like choose what quotes are on here. So if you don't like the quotes, um, you can take it up with the VIP group and let them know because they're the ones that pick these. these I gave them five options and these are the top three. So um, yeah, if you don't like those, you can go ahead and post in there and let them know that you don't approve of those. Um, I know that not everybody has a significant other or our comfy place wouldn't um, pertain to them, but you can use designs, you can use it's so good to be home, you can snuggle up, you can, um, <clears throat> other things work. So try and not be mad at us about the quotes that we choose or they choose. <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with it um, because we really, really try hard to make our kits fit everybody's needs, but out of thousands, it might be impossible and that's okay. So choose what you feel fits your home best. So I made a um, our comfy place pillow already. So I'm going to use um, the other two, snuggle up and it's um, so good to be home. I'm going to use those two and I'm going to try and add in some of these boho designs here which are super cute and fun and I love them but I want to show you how to be able to add to those. Very important thing here is this is fiber. Paint will leak through so you must put something in between here to stop that from leaking through. Whether you cut your cardboard box up that this project came in whether you use another piece of paper, um, you must have a barrier in there. So I'm gonna fold up a piece of paper that I can keep inside of that pillow. About the same size. So step number one, fold a piece of paper to put in the inside of the pillow so you don't have any leaks because that wouldn't be any fun. So, unzip, and you're probably thinking, great, Christine, why'd you send me an empty pillow? Well, for one, um, you couldn't send pillows because of cost, and so the um, majority of people already have 18-inch throw pillows, and that's what this size is. It's 18 by 18. So if you have an 18 by 18 throw pillow, you can use this as a cover and cover it. If you do not have an 18 inch throw pillow, I know you sleep on a pillow and when those pillows get old, they probably just get tossed out. But you can reuse and reuse your stuffing inside the pillow so you could take an old pillow, cut it, and cut it to about 18 inches, 18 by 18. Fold over, you don't even have to sew, just fold over the top half of the pillow, pull out the stuffing that you won't need, make it about the same size, fold that extra piece over. Um, you can trim it and hot glue the top shut again, and then stuff that in. I know everybody has some sort of pillow, something at home they can use. So, get very creative and I know you can do it. So for stenciling on the pillowcase, <clears throat> if your pillowcases are really wrinkled, you may wanna iron them first, but for this, I'm just gonna go for it. So I, when I thought of this design of these pillows, I didn't want a huge black saying across the whole thing. I wanted it nice and subtle and cute and perfect in the corner. So that's why these are small. You can totally put it right in the middle <clears throat> you can do whatever, but these designs were not made to cover the whole stencil. So that's why. There's a lot of good reasons for everything I do around here, I promise. I think out 
everything at least six months in advance for you guys. So I, even though it might not make sense to you, there's a really good reason why things are the way they are with a lot of our boxes. But when you're using your stencils, so we cut, these were all straight edges, exact straight edges. When placing your stencil, I just lightly set this on here and I'm looking at this bottom part of the pillowcase and it's almost all even. And that tells me that my stencil is going to be straight because I know this is a cut factory edge. Okay, I didn't take my scissors and go like this and then I'm going, well, yeah, that's straight. This is a cut factory edge and I know it's straight. So then just press it down. And these are meant to be reusable during the same um, time. You can pull them up and reuse them again. So that's super cool. But, oops. I get some paint off. Let me get some, a good amount of paint out here because we're going to need it. You guys got a new bottle of fabric paint. It's permanent. It will not come off. So, and it is just black. You can use the acrylic colors of paint and all that, but just know that um, if they do get wet, it could come off. Although, you know what? When you paint, and you get some on your clothes, it never comes off. It would probably come off where you don't want it to though. But let's get to stenciling this and it's the same way. Don't worry too much about paint leaking. If you use a really thin paint, that's gonna be very bad for doing on fabric. You must have a thicker <clears throat> pigmented paint, something that's not going to drip off your brush. Our <clears throat> project paint, home paints are perfect for this. They were not going to drip. So if you choose to use your own paints and it turns out and bleeds everywhere, it's too thin of paint. It's going to leak through the fabric. So just paint right over that stencil. If you want the same quote on um, two pillows, I'll show you how to take this stencil and use it again. The cool thing about, like I said earlier, fabric painting and stenciling is much more forgiving than doing it on wood. <clears throat> it looks good when not every piece and part is filled in. Trust me on that. So here I'm gonna pull up this stencil. And as you can see, oh, I didn't get my heart that well, but I do like the heart, so I'm gonna get him real good. Okay, there he is, much better. But here is, see how the home and the O, and it's not perfect, but it looks like it's part of the pillow. Okay, look how pretty. Ta-da! Okay, we can only do work on the front of that for right now. Set it to the side. Oh, I don't have this pillow prepared. I will show you how to use multi stencils, use the stencil multiple times with a shape. Let's do that. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this leaf design. You guys will get so creative. I just know it. And it makes me crazy because you guys are amazing. Our VIP group is amazing at making things look like 10,000 times better than what I do. Although I do have to keep things pretty generic and plain to please the crowds but you guys ha only have to please yourselves and make something you love so i'm taking just the project home paints and i'm taking this green what is it olive yeah olive and painting this on here You can see where it totally just soaks in, but you can also see why these are so forgiving because I, you still get a crisp edge, but they won't bleed. If you're using the right paints and you're not using some that are super watery, like a pouring paint, stay away from pouring paints, then you're gonna get this kind of look. Look at that, perfect. Okay, we're gonna reuse. And I'm gonna go up this side. 
and I'm just gently gonna push down just like that. I know it's not sealed all the way around there, but watch, this is the amazing thing about these stencils and when you're doing it on fabric, the so forgiving it is. It's not sealed all the way down, but I'm just gonna go like this. Uh-oh, I'm gonna leave that little piece there because if I touch it, I got a little splash right there. If I touch it, it'll just make a disaster because it is fabric. And I'm not super picky, but don't want to be messy messy. So I'm just going to leave it and you won't even notice it. Okay. When I place that stencil, I use my palm and just got majority of it smashed back down. And look, there's number two. Beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna put that stencil right over that splash. Look at there. And I actually didn't even palm face it down. So look, watch. Even when I don't palm it and plant it down, it still works. Fabric stenciling is amazing. And I'm going to do one more right at the top. Again, I didn't even push it down. It's not secured down in the middle, but watch how it turns out. You cannot <clears throat> do that on wood. That is for darn sure. Wood is definitely not as forgiving as fabric is when we're stenciling. Turn this. The possibilities are 100% endless with what you want to do with these. Absolutely endless, but look at that. Your own pillowcases. Nobody else has this in their home. Nobody, nobody. Nobody has this exact design in their house. You are gonna create your very own one-of-a-kind pillowcases and look how amazing that is so if you do happen to splash i see i did here again you can probably let me see i i usually have baby wipes out here i don't have any right now but you can probably wipe that up and get it real wet if you don't get it really wet then it's not gonna um, clean up very well but i'm gonna take the paper out because I'm going to use it again, but I suggest leaving yours in until the whole pillowcase is dry. I'm going to set that up there so it can dry. And I'm going to do something fun over here with the other stencils. So let me get this prepared. Okay, I love this rainbow, so I have to use it. And we can do all sorts of colors. <clears throat> Again, if you choose to use um, something different than fabric paint, I can't guarantee what happens when you wash it or what happens when you get it wet. That's um, going to be a risk you take. Just grabbing some paint brushes here. Okay.
Okay, there's the rainbow in a few different fun colors. And look how cute. And even this triangle piece didn't turn out that great, but it's still super cute. So, enjoy getting creative with how you choose to paint your pillows. I'm going to do one last snuggle up. And I'm gonna use the blue. And there we are. Look at that. Two completely different designs, different color schemes, different everything, but it's your one of a kind. So once I get all these finished, you'll see obviously the finished product on your um, photographs that are on the front of the instructions, but I can't wait to see what you guys come up with because the possibilities are endless between the crates and the pillows the crate the colors the color schemes you can do everything is just going to be amazing so that is it for the pillows let's get back to the crates i'm going to set these to the side and let me go over stencils really quickly these are reusable mesh stencils so once you are finished with the stencil, don't let the paint dry in the mesh in these little holes because it will clog the holes and then paint the next time can't penetrate. So when you are finished with these, I should have a cookie sheet out here with water, so I apologize, I do not, but it's best to just set these right in a cookie sheet with water so they can soak and then take them to the sink and wash them, wash the stencils. They'll get kind of rubbery feeling don't crumble them up, just nice and rub them. Keep them flat, nicely rub them. And once they are washed out, you put them face down on a towel, just like this, to dry. They will become sticky again and you can reuse them. Three to five times reusable. Obviously the stick is going to um, lessen the longer you go. But as you see with stenciling on the pillowcases, the stick is not that necessary. So that's also something you can do with your old stencils that don't stick that well anymore, is use a nice thick paint and stencil on the pillowcases. So that is what you do to wash them up. Um, me, I'm just going to toss these ones because I will be done with them. So they, I won't, I won't be washing them. Um, but let's get back to the crates and building those. Let me get my paintbrushes in water and I will be right back. All right, here we are with the crates. And if you, you have a screwdriver that came in your kit, has a nice good handle on it so your hands they still may get tired doing this. If you get too tired and you have access to a drill, you may use a drill with a Phillips head screwdriver in, or bit, drill bit in it, and you're good to go there. In our VIP group, <clears throat> earlier on in the month of July, I posted several drills that I recommend. Um, this is one of them. It comes in a set of two, this is an impact drill, and this is a standard drill. Comes in a set of two, I believe you can get a whole kit of bits and drill bits and all sorts of stuff. For 129 is the sale that was going on at the time. 
Um, and I love these drills. I mean, I use them for everything. So clearly they were laying out when, when we painted this building because <laughs> it got a little dirty, but <clears throat> I love these drills. They're lightweight. They're awesome to use. So, um, and I've had them for probably eight or nine years. So I've had these for a long time and they are still going strong. I've never replaced the batteries, nothing. So if you have a drill bit or drill, you can use a drill. If you do not, the screwdriver works great. And like I was saying earlier, there is countersunk holes already drilled. And then there's holes drilled into the wood that you're drilling into. So it is easy. This fence side piece sets on the side just like that. And if you turn it like this and you go, wait a minute, there's no drill, no screw holes and it doesn't fit, um, then that's because it's not meant to go that way. It's meant to go this way. So make sure that you put it, assemble it the correct way. But very easy, just take your screws and I would start with the side pieces. You can even set your screw right in there since that countersunk hole is in there and just screw it in. You'll notice it's much easier because of the holes are all pre-drilled and the countersunk allows the screw to be flush. If you don't like the look of that screw, which I know not my favorite either, then you can take a dab of sort of the same color. Like I could take <clears throat> this gray from our kit and paint my screw. And it's much less visible. So if you don't like the screws, you can cover them up um, with a color that matches. If you're okay with them, then just leave them. Okay, I'll put my other side on. Again, it fits right in there. If you're having trouble fitting them after they are painted, um, the wood has expanded a little bit and you may just have to wait for that wood to dry a lot better or kind of um, gently force it in there because it, should, it shouldn't expand that much. Okay, so I have my sides on. Maybe get closer here. Now I'm gonna do the top. And these pieces be very careful with. It's very easy to over screw and split your wood. They don't, this is not a super weight bearing side piece. So just get it in there so it's tight and then be done. Don't over screw it or you will break your wood off right there. If you do that, just reverse the screw a little bit and leave it, okay? Again, these are not like you're building furniture and you have to have this. You can see a split right there. I'm just stopping. You, this is not furniture, not something somebody's gonna sit on. We don't need to make sure that it's, you know, 250 pound weight proof. This is for books and candles and decor. So don't worry about that. But just once you get to the, it tightened, stop. Don't over tighten it or else you will crack the wood. See, totally not bad when they're pre-drilled. That's why Project Home Kits are awesome because they are pre-drilled and we take care of you guys and make sure that you can assemble these without any major tools. But tools are fun. So I'm going to use the drill the rest of the time and assemble the rest of these.
all done. Crates and pillows. Here are our crates. You can also use them as trays if you like to set stuff on them. Use one as a tray, one as a crate, stack books. Again, ideas are endless. Make sure you're in our VIP group and you can see lots of ways that people have used their crates and pillows. But for me, I love a little wolf. We're gonna do it that way. All right, guys, till next time. We'll see you next month and stay crafty, stay creative. Join the group in the VIP and share your creations there. Make sure that you share your creation in our designated monthly album to be entered in to our Takes the Craft monthly um, voting competition between uh, that the VIP group votes on. So make sure you join that and your chance to win a free box the next month. All right. Enjoy, have fun, and we'll see you next time. Bye.